Over the years, as I've been making videos on this channel, I've constantly been asked one thing. How do I make my videos? Well, I can safely tell you that it's a recipe of all sorts of very valuable ingredients. You need a good team, you need a good sense of animation, and most of all, you need a good story to start with. This video is going to take you through the whole process of how a Crotunia video gets made, from the basic concept all the way to the final render. To demonstrate, we're going to use our simplest Crotunia short format, Crotunian Conversations, to show a basic 1 minute and 10 second short, and how even something as short as that requires a lot of work to go into it. So grab your notebook, grab some popcorn, and hold on tight, as we take you through the making of a Crotunia video. The first major step to any Crotunia video is typically determining what kind of video I want to make, and that typically comes down to three important elements. What kind of story do I want to tell? What characters do I want to utilize? And what kind of plot do I want to get them involved in? Each format suits a different kind of story very well. The longer episodes are obviously for longer, more complex stories I want to tell. Meet the Crotunians is a great way of establishing certain characters a bit better. Crotunian shoots are more laid-back, atmospheric videos to show off locations. And Crotunian conversations are very simple, very character-driven pieces. With a lot of larger, longer projects currently in the works, I wanted to do something a lot more simple and kind of quick to get out, while at the same time not sacrificing the story quality of my videos. I had recently been gifted a few models from a patron of mine, NASCAR221, some of them being Murdoch and Norman. Norman I had already used in a previous Crotunian conversation done earlier in the summer, but Murdoch was a more recent model and I'd been asked to try him out and see what I thought. After putting him into the mountain intersection set I used in a few videos while brainstorming, I also remembered the introduction of another character that I'd been meaning to use beyond cameos for a while, that being Chuggington's steam-driven industrial engine, Speedy McAllister. Going back to Norman, he was also a character I was getting more interested in using given his characteristics. Merchandise and brief appearances gave hints of his characteristics, but we never got to see them properly utilized in the original Thomas and Friends series. The two biggest being his merchandise bio mentioning that he breaks down often, and a line from the season 23 episode, Diesel Do Right. And Norman, usually so reliable. I had also gained interest in all engines go, frequently using sailboats as cargo to be delivered. It's something I had done in a couple of videos, and something I wanted to try and explore again. All of these ideas ultimately gave me the idea of doing a test in the program that I used to animate my videos, Miku Miku Dance. And alongside the test, I decided to pitch the idea to my friend Loki, who helped co-create this series. The pitch was very much simple. Speedy and Norman get stopped at a red while Murdoch goes by. Speedy has a part to repair one of the quarry excavators, and Norman has a boat from Morgana's Pond to be mended at Hen and Keen. After the train passes and they have a quick convo about their ordeal, they're about to go when Norman breaks down, partially on the switch. They're now both stuck. This was essentially the formula for a Crotunian conversation, a casual conversation between characters, sometimes leading to or even happening during some very humorous situations. Which Little Engine was based on a very similar pitch, basically being what would happen if all the Little Engines that could, officially known in media, ended up being called at the same time. The three of them having the mail route ultimately made for an easy location to pinpoint. It's important to remember whenever you're making a video that one little spark can ultimately make a very big idea. What began as a simple test of a new model ultimately turned into a new short ready to go into production. With the concept down, the next step was to go and get the script done up. With the exception of Railside Tales, all of my scripts are done in Courier New 10, as that typically equals out to a page a minute, though it can definitely vary from accuracy. Red Light was about a page and a little under a third, while Meg's Headliner was about 12 pages total. I tend to use a standard screenplay format as it easily lists out what kind of actions and locations will be used during the video. Apart from the drop mention of Morgana's Pond in the script, there wasn't too many changes from the development process to the script writing phase for Red Light. But for an idea of how a script can get a drastic change, which little engine had a major new element? Originally, the titular question was going to come from a Sudrian workman giving out the order. Then it was changed to a UP diesel that was going to have a tug-style megaphone, until I decided the character would be better off being a completely new one given I was getting into his personality a bit during recording, and that's how Brucey was born. Goo goo ga ga! But now that we have a final script... The next step was to get the script recorded so that we could start the animation for it. A lot of our Crotunian conversations tend to be just me and Loki, but we also have the help of Mystery Man, aka Chris Bouchard, helping us out with this one voicing Murdoch. 
Recording can be tricky for me for a few reasons, as one, voice actors tend to have pretty busy schedules on the team, and two, I typically don't get too much time or, well, time I can set for aside for myself to actually record certain things, depending on the day. Luckily, during the week I was producing this short, I did not have many shifts listed, and I had a bit of a quieter night to myself to work on this. It also helped that this short had two people that typically get pretty fast turnaround with projects, so it was easy to get the scratch track ready and get things all set up for animating. If the script was our blueprint, then the scratch track is our concrete, the foundation to get the short done. Everything for the short going forward is going to be developed completely around this. And with the scratch track done, it's time to go to MMD again. If the scratch track is our concrete, then the blocking phase is going to be our girders, the framework for the building we're about to build. Blocking essentially means setting up key poses and movements that your characters are going to be doing. Your camera layouts will be roughed out, and you'll get a basic idea of what you want to do with the characters once you get down to final animation. This is extremely important as it'll help you iron out the kinks you might have along the way, and avoid you making your short making look like a bit of a pancake. Sometimes you can even come up with brand new ideas during this phase. In my initial test, Norman was just pushed towards the crossing with the the way to the sailboat as he was breaking, but as I was developing it, I got the idea for both a quick cameo and a sneaky easter egg, as I decided to throw in a speeding diesel 10 and two troublesome trucks from All Engines Go that just so happened to have the colors resembling the Tomy Play Rail packs that used to be available. This also gave me the opportunity of taking a joke that LJ Productions had done back in April and ultimately make it a reality. Taking my All Engines Go Henry model I had done early in the year, I decided to make up the purple engine that was briefly spotted in Nia's perfect plan and ultimately make it more of my own thing thus giving Murdoch a back engine for the end of his long train. After rendering out this rough and finalizing some ideas with the audio track, it was ultimately time for the brunt of the animation phase. It's time to give these characters some animation. Character animation is one of my favorite parts of the process. I love going very expressive with my work, so doing something that has two contrasting styles easily gave for some fun opportunities. I started off with a bit of animation for each of them just to get the style down, and once that was all figured out, I ultimately decided to go with the characters step by step. Norman was the first up, as he wasn't going to require too much in the way of animation. The Thomas characters are animated like the original model episodes, mainly relying on faceplates and moving eyes. This may sound easier, but it definitely puts a lot more pressure onto making a good product that isn't just basic, simple stuff. Making sure the eyes had a lot of personality and not just relying on the faceplates is very important when it comes to animating the Thomas gang. The breakdown scene was easily one of the toughest bits to nail, as that would call for something that would be very jittery, but not unnaturally repetitive. I started with something I could easily copy and paste, and then as it got more intense, and with the sound effects in the scratch track, I ultimately took out some frames, moved some around, or ultimately moved around the model a tiny bit to give it a bit more of a natural feel. I also had the hit arrow bit in mind and how they would jitter about the engines for certain sequences. The work on his main character animation would ultimately be about 40 to 45 minutes. As I was starting on Speedy, the testing was very important as I realized his eyes were going to be very difficult to animate if they were going to remain separate bones like they had initially been. I took him into PMX Editor, where I typically rig or edit certain models, and quickly gave him a new bone in between the two eyes, although initially it didn't quite come out the right way rigged, so I quickly went back and fixed it. But this made the process of animating Speedy much easier, as I could now animate both eyes without losing the data I had initially started with. Speedy was also the only character in the short to require any kind of lip syncing, which made the process a bit lengthy to say the least. His jaw could be easily animated smoothly, as I could change the interpolation curve with each new keyframe. However, for the mouth sliders, that's not so easy, so I would have to add new slow in, slow out frames so that it would look a bit more natural. Another difficult thing was I wanted to make sure his upper body movement movement had personality, rather than being the same sort of up and down sort of business that Thomas and friends had done during their Big World Big Adventures era. The two main things I try to keep my upper body animation with all my characters is subtle and flowing. I want to make them feel alive rather than having to always jump around all over the place like crazy, though some characters will call for it. Speedy is a character that will take his time and think things through, so I applied that principle to his animation. He doesn't move erratically, his eyes will dart a little bit as he's thinking, and he'll sometimes do some of a head nod as he's looking around. I try to make sure that his character can read through without any dialogue needed, and I think for the most part I achieved this with the short. His smoke deflectors also give a nice bit of character to him, as he could easily flip them up to draw attention to something going 
going on through the scene. In total, the final character animation for Speedy, I'd say, took a little bit over an hour, though there's still one last major difference I can mention between our two leads before I move on. Murnock and Norman had IK rigs for their wheels, meaning I could easily set the rotation to a certain degree, and the wheels would move as such until the next frame, which I would set to another degree. Speedy and the back engine, on the other hand, were animated frame by frame with basic 90 degree rotations, and as Speedy stops in the animation, I would also have to move those frames over in order to make that happen. Murdoch and Diesel 10 didn't really require much, as both of them were kind of flashing by a bit, but the back engine had some extra movement I animated during the blocking phase. But now that our characters have been animated, it was time to move on to one of the most important steps of the animation process, getting the final render ready. <laughs> Over time, as we get ready for the render process, you might have noticed a few changes have been going on as the animation's been finished up. The sky has been changed from a generic blue to a more early morning open road feel. Smoke effects ranging from Speedy's chuffing to the breakdown smoke has been gradually added. And even during the blocking phase, we might have even tested around with a few effects we might use for the final. The final job, once all the character animation is done, is to get all the final effects in, some leftover smoke effects we might need, a bit of lighting for the sun and the signal, and some much better looking shadows. The final video will be rendered in an AVI format with an MJPEG compressor. I didn't check the render time specifically for this short. I, uh, I admittedly kind of took a nap because I was very tired, but I would have to estimate this took anywhere between 45 minutes to over an hour to render. The more effects and characters utilized, the longer the render will typically take. But soon enough, we'll be able to see the finalized animation and the glow up it's taken. The final job is to put everything all together. Animation, voices, sound, the works. If a short demands 2D animation, I'll do it myself or typically get help from Lucky to get it finished. We'll check over if there's any animation errors to fix up. And soon we'll get the soundtrack finalized on Sony Vegas because I find it a bit easier to work with with sound effects and can access a few more files. And the final render will be taken over to Adobe Premiere, which typically keeps the video quality pretty strong. Remember, this short took only one shot to produce, so typically a longer episode episode or short with a few more, we'll typically take a few more shots with the same procedures we just did. Once we're pretty well set to go, I'll send it over to some of my crew to look at, I'll send it to our patrons for an early look, and I'll eventually get it all set for YouTube with a thumbnail and everything. At a total of four days from start to finish, starting on September 16th and concluding on September 20th, this was one of the fastest videos I've ever done for Crotunia in a decent while. Having a slower week definitely helped in the long run, but keep in mind, this was a much smaller and much simpler short. There's a reason certain videos have been held back for a while. But it helps to give you a good idea of what goes into making a Crotunia video, and why it takes as long as it does. While at times making videos can get a little bit exhausting if I've got a lot going on, Crotunia is a project I've been incredibly proud of making over the years. The crew I've gotten over the years has not only been just an amazing team of artists and animators and voice actors, They've also been a lot of my closest friends I've gotten to know. And seeing the love and attention this series has gotten over the years has... honestly been really touching at times. Crotunia is a project that has meant a lot to me, and having worked on it for 10 years and being able to do what I do, it's... it's something I wouldn't trade for the world, honestly. <laughs> to everybody who has been supporting my channel over the last 10 years, and has seen me grow from, you know, a goofy, nostalgia critic wannabe to making w this crazy, fun crossover series that's kind of pushing the boundaries of what people kind of tend to expect with this stuff. I want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. And I mean that. This isn't just me saying sentimental stuff for the sake of saying sentimental stuff. This, this project has taken me to places I thought I'd never be, both as, like, an animator and as a person. And I could not be here without all of you guys just watching my stuff over the years and sharing it with friends. I hope you enjoyed this little look at how I make my videos and kind of the process that goes through them and hopefully inspires you to make your own stuff kind of this way. Don't just make stuff because you want to be popular or you want to meet a quota. Make what you want to make. And if you're lucky enough and if you work hard enough, your audience will eventually find you. So with that all said and done, I'm gonna leave you guys to watch the cartoon I just spent this whole video making. I hope you guys really enjoyed this and this inspired you in some ways. And this is Milan, just signing out. Oh, Speedy, you take away soon. All right, lad. 
Ah, top of the morning, Norm. Morning, Speedy. How are you today? <laughs> My, that's a tall order. Where's that headed off to then? Oh, it broke down upriver near Green Bank Hills. I'm hauling it to Hen and Cane's for repairs. <laughs> well, that's two of us on delivery detail. I've got a new motor for one of our excavators. Marion and Marianne are having a hard time keeping up with today's orders without it. Oh. Well, I hope you can get that mended as soon as you can. And hope your boat gets safely delivered. Oh, and a uh, word of advice. Take the main line through Great Wolf. No bridges or tunnels for you to worry about. Thanks. See you later, Speedy. <laughs> <clears throat> well, this is a fine time for my engine to give out. Too typical.